Good morning everyone, welcome to this Revit Steel Modeling tips, tips and Tricks webinar. So my name's Rob Merriman, if you haven't met me before that's a lovely picture of me there. Uh, I have now been working in the construction industry, well it's 12 years, it's just ticked over recently. I've um, done 8 to 9 years as an architectural metalwork and structural steel at Draftsman using Autodesk uh, Advanced Steel. And uh, 3 years ago I moved to Greytech. UK where and I work as an application structures a structures application engineer uh, so do the demonstration training technical support and customization for structural CAD packages mainly focused on advanced steel uh, but with the addition to advanced steel in the AC collection um, and I work with some of the tools in the AC collection for steelwork so a little bit about Greytech we are a global company. We have 550 staff and out of that 550, 355 are technical. So we are technically driven. We are 30 years old um, and based at our headquarters are out in France. Now we are becoming one of the largest Autodesk partners worldwide. Like I said, we are technically driven. So we do have our own research and development center out in Romania. Um, who develop our own applications such as Advanced Design and then the Power Packs for Revit and Advanced Deal and Inventor. And we are here to work with you guys first. We work on hundreds of thousands of projects with our customers. We have a 98% excellent or good feedback on our support and globally that's over 50,000 support cases and globally we do 3,500 training courses per year. So why Greytech? Uh, we are one of the only companies that can take your project from start to finish. So we've broken that in that down into four key areas. So that is uh, create using the Autodesk products and enhanced with the Greytech power packs. Simulate taking those designs and then making sure that they can work for the real world. Uh, so that's using Greytech technology such as advanced design and advanced design connection. We then have Fabricate, so taking your finished model through to fabrication. Um, so those of you who use Advanced Steel, we can obviously use Advanced Steel to do the fabrication drawings. But we have tools such as Advanced Workshop and Armour Plus. And then all of those areas or all of the areas um, of your project lifecycle produce data and work in progress data and drawings. And they need to be managed and usually you need to collaborate with an external common data environment. So all of that can be done with Greytech OpenTree. So there we have the Create. We've got the Autodesk products. We're going to be looking at Revit today. We have Simulate, so Advanced Design, the BIM Designers, Fabricate, Workshop, and obviously Advanced Deal sits in there as well. And then Manage, we have Greytech OpenTree and the BIM 360. Um, obviously, you're watching this webinar today. We want to just make sure that everyone can uh, and is accessing all of the content that Greytech create for you. So all previous webinar recordings are found on our dedicated AEC content portals or advanced deal content portals. So every webinar that's been done from the last three or four years can now be found on these portals. Uh, we also, as well, part of our role as our technical staff, we write blogs. Um, so are you subscribed to our blogs? Uh, if not, click on the links. This uh, presentation has been done as a handout. Uh, so in your go to webinar dialog box where you type the questions or the chat in, there is a handout tab. So if you look in the handouts, you'll be able to click on these links and subscribe to the blogs. We, as Greytech, have now run two online BIM Up conferences. So those are completely free online conferences that last three days. Uh, in the 2020 conference, we ran 270 classes over the three days. If you're a Greytech customer, you can watch these classes on demand from your Greytech Advantage login. And uh, this is mainly applying to the UK. If you are a Greytech UK supported customer, uh, other countries just check with your Greytech office. 
uh, you should have access to the Revit Power Pack or the Advanced Steel Power Pack, depending on what software you're working with. Uh, if you're not sure, or you don't have them installed, please just reach out to your account manager and they can double check everything for you. So the upcoming webinars from us in the Structures team. Uh, next week, not next week, the week after, sorry, uh, Alec is looking at the Advanced Steel Secrets to Stairs. Uh, then he's also going to be looking at the Secrets to Railings. I'm then going to be uh, creating a play park with advanced deals. So we're just going to run through some of the advanced deal functionality and some tips and tricks, and we're going to model a play park. I'll then look and take the secrets to stairs, the secrets to railings, maybe even the play park as well. And then I will go through the Revit and advanced deal workflow. So we'll look at putting these elements into between Revit and advanced deal. And then the last webinar for this quarter, Alec is going to be do an advanced deal frequently asked questions webinar. So we're going to take a lot of the questions that come up on our support system um, and then we will run through it all. All of the webinars you can find on our events page. So when we announce the next quarter, we'll obviously email everyone and let you know. Make sure, especially if you're a UK customer, that you are subscribed to get the emails from Claire.Merrick. Uh, if you've accidentally unsubscribed from everything, you will also miss the emails about these webinars. So what we what are we going to look at today? So we're looking at the steel modeling inside of Revit. We're going to look at some tips and tricks. So we're going to start by looking at families. We are going to look at the steel fabrication format, and that's the format that is created when you start to apply these connections inside of Revit. We'll then actually look at applying connections and what we can do with the connections, how we can get them populated around the model. We'll then look at manually modeling items. So we'll look at plates, bolts, anchors, holes and shear studs, welds, cuts, contours, notches and miters. Then we'll look at what we can do and how we can create custom connections. And then we'll just talk a little bit towards the end about customizing and adding extra data to these options. So we will start with the steel tab. The steel tab was added in Revit 2019. You now have tools to create connections, plates, bolts, welds, all the notches and the miters for structural framing and structural columns. When you apply these elements, it does change the structural beams and the structural framings. They are still to Revit structural beams and structural framings, but it adds an extra layer called the steel fabrication format. So I am going to run through that. Uh, you do have the ability to model custom connections. These tools have been taken from advanced steel. So the, although they are new tools for you guys who are Revit users, they are the same tools that have been inside Advanced Deal for the last 15 years. So as a Revit user, you can now create models with a higher level of detail. You don't have to do model in place families. And the benefit of modeling these elements using the steel tab is you can then export this model and pass it to your advanced steel draftsman who can then run all the fabrication drawings from the model using advanced steel so it's uh autodesk have put these basic modeling tools inside of revit to try and reduce the siloed workflow where you as the revit detailer or technician are doing the modeling for your engineers drawings I, in an ideal world, we don't want the steel fabricator to have to remodel everything from scratch. It just takes more time and costs more money. So if you've created them in Revit using the steel tab, we can then pass them on to the steel detailer. So families. The steel tab and the elements within the steel tab will only work on certain families. So it will only work on structural frames, framings and structural columns. At the moment, non-linear elements are not supported and tapered, compound, welded, cellular and joist elements are not supported. So it is structural columns and structural framings. Your family must be a simple extrusion or sweep. So if you have got a custom family where you've got additional components or openings, 
those are not supported and the connections won't work, you'll get an error message. A lot of today is me hopefully explaining why we get error messages when we try to apply these steel elements. Your material must be set to steel. So if you are creating your own structural families, you do need to ensure that the structural framing and structural columns are created as shown in the following links. So Autodesk have created links for hot roll steel shapes, cold form steel shapes, and other steel shapes. And from our testing, myself and John Bennett have been working with um, these steel tools since they've been added to Revit, um, because obviously we are familiar with them from Advanced Steel. We've even found that if we look at that picture that's on the screen there, that C profile with lips, you can see the lips are on the right hand side of the profile. When you're creating your family, you want to make sure that you've actually got them on the right hand side of the profile as well. If you create them with the lips on the left hand side of the profile, we found that when we start to transfer these models into advanced steel, uh, the sections can get flipped. The steel fabrication shape, this comes up quite a lot. There is some confusion about it. Um, I want to point out to you what's going to happen to your Revit model before you, if you haven't used these tools before, before you start using these tools um, so you can understand why certain things are happening and what is happening. So as soon as you apply a steel fabrication element, one of the connections, some bolts, some anchors, some holes, one of the cuts or the copes or the mitres from the steel tab, the geometrical shape is replaced by the steel fabrication shape. So what you get is you get the exact shape of the element. To Revit, this, the section is still a structural framing and a structural column. It just needs an extra layer for these tools to work. Remember, these tools are the exact same code as they are in advanced steel. So Autodesk have had to add some extra layers in or some extra code inside of Revit for these steel tools to work. And that is the steel fabrication shape. Once you have applied and it, the system has changed it to a steel fabric, fabrication shape, the process is irreversible. So even if you delete the connection or you delete the contour, to Revit, that member is still, still a steel fabrication shape. So the only way to undo that is to delete the member and remodel it. So that is quite an important thing to take into consideration if you are using these tools or if you're looking at using these tools. Like we said, it inherits the type parameters of the section. So it is still a structural framing and a structural column. We do get extra instance parameters. So we get coatings, paint area, cut length, weight, and the exact weight. So the weight is the weight of the raw material. And the exact weight is the weight of the material with the notches and the holes removed. When you apply these steel tools, it changes or it adds this extra layer, the steel fabrication shape. Because of that extra layer, there are certain standard Revit functionalities that don't behave as they normally would. So your modify tools, so steel fabrication shape elements can't be grouped. So as soon as you apply a connection, you can't then select 10 columns and group them together. They can't be included in assemblies. You can't create parts from the steel fabrication shape elements because they're not included in assemblies. And you can't array them because when you do an array in Revit, it creates them as a group and we can't group steel fabrication elements. The split tool is unavailable. The one thing that is available that came up on a presentation I did for the Manchester Revit user group, so I thought I would just uh, clarify it. Schedules and labeling for your structural columns and structural frame framings behave as normal. Even though these elements are wrapped up in this steel fabrication shape, they are still structural columns and structural framings. So you can still schedule and do your labeling as you normally would. Okay, so connections. What I would like to do is I would like to run a poll to see, do you guys actually currently use the steel tab in Revit? So you can click on multiple options if you do a little bit of some and not others, or if you're not at the moment because you don't know how to use the tools. Um, would just be intrigued to see out of everyone who's on this webinar. 
uh, who does what and if they're using these tools. So we've got 85% of you had voted at the moment. It's creeping up to 92. So there's a couple more people who haven't registered. There we go. Thank you very much. So I can close that poll. We are actually pretty much uh, nearly split equally. 31% use it regularly. 31% have tried some of the tools, 31 not at the moment, and 23% of you don't know how to use the tool. So hopefully you will pick up some uh, tips and tricks in this webinar. So thank you for answering the poll. So connections. Your connections do need to be loaded into the project. Now connections have been available in Revit since 2017. Again, these tools have been taken straight from, Revit, uh, from Advanced Steel. So in 2017, they added 22 connections, so like base plates, fin plates, and things like that. Uh, Revit 2018, that number got increased to 130. And then with the Steel tab in 2019, that number is now around 150 standard connections. So on the steel tab or in the structure tab, you click the little arrow in the bottom right there, and then you can load in your connections into the project. If you have got connections in an old project, they can now be transferred using the transfer project standards. And we're going to look at all of these in a minute. I'm going to run through a couple of things and then we'll actually go and demonstrate it. If you guys are new to the tools and you want to see what the joints will do, once they're loaded into the project, you can hover over the connection and the flyout will show you the selection order that's required, the profiles that that connection will work on, because certain connections will only work on certain profiles, and a brief description of what the joint can achieve. So you can see there, I'm hovering over the connection. It's telling me for that base plate, it's work. it will only work on a column, it will work on any profile and then in the description you've got all the different options and you've got some pictures in there to give you a helping hand. When you're using these connections, to, to actually see the connections, your level of detail needs to be set to fine. Otherwise you will just see a round circle with a couple of lines coming out of it. That's the uh, medium and coarse representation of the connections. These structural connections have their own visibility graphics category. So if you're using a company template that's a couple of years old, you might just want to go and look at that template to make sure that they are showing. Once you've applied the connections, you can copy and mirror them around the model using the standard Revit copy and mirror. Or for 2020, Autodesk added a new tool called Propagate Connection. So that allows you to select the joint, right click and you can choose propagate connection. Now what it will do is it automatically looks for the elements with the same section or sections. If you've got uh, two inputs on a connection, it'll look for the, the same input drivers and then it will automatically apply that throughout the model. If you don't want a connection applied, you can isolate it. If you turn the elements off, it won't propagate the connection to the items that are turned off. 2020, we now have the option to create different types of connections. So obviously you are, you guys are Revit users, so you're used to types. We only got types for connections in 2020. So out of the box, the type is base plate, but we could then describe that as 300 square and put a description in there so we can have multiple types of the same base plate connection in the model. And if you combine this with the transfer using the project uh, transfer that effectively allows you to build a connection library. So what we're going to do in here, I've gone to the steel tab. We're going to load in some connections to this basic project, this basic platform. So you can see in here, we've got the different groups. So if we look at beam end to end, to end these are our uh, apex connections, our crank connections, our splice connections. If you've got column to beams, you want some haunches in there. We've got haunches, we've got general bracings for angles and things like that. So we're going to load in a couple of the angle connections. So we just select the ones we want, click add, and that will add them into the project. We want a base plate, 
we might need an end plate and a stiffener. Stiffener was a new connection for 2021, so it allows you just to click any point on the beam and add the stiffener in. And then platform beams, if you've got uh, fin plates, tow plates, angle plate connections, those are all in the platform, the platform beams tab. So what we do is we select the member, go to the steel tab, choose connection. And the reason I select the member first is that will filter my loaded connections by the connections that have a single input. If we just did a connection first, it would show me every connection. So let's put our base plate on. You can see it's put the plate, the anchors, and it will have put the welds in there and it shortened the column automatically. So we're gonna now go in and edit the type. That was a, this was a new addition to 2020. And I'm going to duplicate the type. So in this example, I'm gonna type the section size that it's on and then the plate size. And then we can go in and we can modify the parameters. You'll see on the left hand side of the screen, we've got the dialog in there. That dialog will update automatically when we start making changes. So we can zoom in in here and pan and orbit around. So we're gonna have a 20 mil base plate. Now, if you want a pack and grout value in there, what you do is you take the plate thickness and your pack and grout value, and then that is the value that you shorten them by. So in here, you can apply different fillets to the corners. And we can also put a radius in there. The plate dimensions I just set to 150 millimeters from the center of the column all round. And then I'm going to change the anchor types. So I'm going to use a Hilti HAS. I think we'll up that to M16. And then we can choose the different lengths. Then we can control the spacings parallel to the web and parallel to the flange. And then in the welds tab, we can set the welds that are in there. The welds are the little crosses that you see in there. And I've set this to an eight mil fillet weld all round. We'll click okay. So that is my type edited. Now you'll see that that column has gone a light blue. That light blue is the background calculation and that is now applied that connection. So you can see in there, we've got a 25 millimeter gap from the concrete to the underside of our column. Now, if I have a connection with two inputs, so I want a fin plate connection in here. Again, we choose the two inputs and then it will filter the connections by the ones that will work with two inputs. So our shear plate, or as we would call it in the UK, a fin plate, that needs a main beam and a secondary beam. So the blue dot in there is our main beam. Two is the secondary beam. If you click that little button there, it will flip them around. So it will put the fin plate on the beam and put that into the column. Or we can drag the big, we can drag either of the grips and that will change the main beam and the secondary beam. So if you do get your selection order incorrect, you can just uh, grab the grips and change it around. So again, we're going to duplicate the type. I'm just gonna correct this to six bolts, it's not five bolts. And then we'll go into the parameters for that tab. So once you've started applying the connections, all of these dialog boxes sort of follow a similar, a similar, um, a similar format. So we can apply the different cuts and notches. I'm going to come in here and we can change the thickness of the plate. If you want just a rectangular plate, we'll change it to defaults. And then horizontally, how many bolts do I want and what edge distances do I want? So we'll leave it on two bolts horizontally. And then vertically, you can see the picture on the right hand side. We're going to say from the top of the plate to the top of the first bolt is 30 millimeters. The distance between the bolts is 70 millimeters. And then I want three lines. And again, we can change the uh, the weld information. What you do want to do is set up these joints exactly how you want them within the dialog box. Because then when it comes to tagging the welds and things like that, the all that information will be done automatically. 
and when we pass it on to the steel detailer that information is in there automatically for them. So I'm just going to save the file. So that's putting on a couple of different connections. Now I'm going to open up an existing project. So this is my sort of standard connections file that I've created for this webinar. I just got a different type of base plate in there and I've got a toe plate connection in there. So I've got an offset base plate and I've got a toe plate connection. So we'll go back to our main model and we'll just use the standard transfer project standards. And if you scroll down, you will now see that we have the structural connection types. I'm going to bring in the new types only. And then if we go and have a look, we'll click on the base plate. You can see now that we have the standard base plate, the 300 square I created in this model, but then the 300 square offset one, which we've transferred from the other project. So we can go and put the offset connection in on the back there. And that's me transferring that from a different project. So I haven't had to set that one up. And that's because those columns are not tight to the wall, but they're about 20 mil away from the wall. Again, we've got my two inputs in here. And then that's going to put the platform plate on there for me. So again, this is something that I've used on a previous project or as a company standard, and then I don't have to set it all up again. So that's uh, applying connections. We can simply select the connection and copy it. And we can copy them around. But what I'm going to show you is this propagate. Uh, tool that we looked at in the presentation a little bit earlier. So I want to propagate that connection. But if I propagated that and I click that button now, that would propagate it for everything. These columns against the rear wall, I don't want that connection applied to those columns because I need the offset one. So I'm just going to override and I'm going to hide those elements. And then I'm going to select the main base plate and I'm going to choose the propagate option. And you can see all these columns have gone that cyan color. Now the system is processing the, that connection and applying it to all of the columns that are in cyan. So you can see there it's finished processing and that is me now. That I have applied those connections. I'm just going to select the elements that were hidden. I'm not quite sure why there was one beam that was hiding in there. We are going to unhide these options. And now I can propagate the connection on the rear. Now, it won't add connections to a column that has already got a connection, so it will only propagate to 152UCs that don't have a connection on. We can do it for the fin plate connection. You can see in here it's still processing the base plate, so it won't start the next propagate until it's finished processing the other connections. So we can propagate the fin plate connection. And what that will do is the column has to be the same section size and the beam has to be the same section size or the structural framing. So it will only propagate that fin plate connections where the column matches the original column and the structural framing matches the original framing. You can see in there that it's now finished because it says there are no background calculations to process and that's applied that fin plate connection all around the model. That will only work on the beam flanges, but that is the basics of us applying connections and manipulating them around the model. So what happens if we want to manually model some elements? The one 
tip that I would like everyone to take from today is that when you're manually modeling elements, make sure you move your cursor from the properties window. So we change the number of anchors to 10. To get that to take effect, you need to move your cursor from the properties into the actual view. Uh, sometimes even I forget about that. And then you think, why is it not changing? You've just got to put your cursor into the view. So if you're manually modeling plates, you select the plate, and then we basically use the sketch command that you guys are used to, and we can draw any shape plate we want. You can create the plates in a 3D view or in the plan views. 2021, they actually updated the system to allow you to add these elements into sections and elevations as well. Your plate does need to be a closed contour. And again, to see the plates, you need to be in detail level fine. If you're manually modeling bolts, anchors, holes or shear studs there should be holes in there as well if you're placing bolts through say four objects make sure you select all four objects first before you apply the bolts and that's just multiple select with control and click sketch your pattern now for bolts anchors holes and shear studs it's either a rectangular or a circular pattern if you needed a different pattern we would put one bolt in and then you could copy it around once you've placed them, you can modify the quantity, the edge distances, the bolt types, etc. in the properties dialog. For your cut tools, one tip I've got for you, if you want to apply a contour cut, so that say we've got need an opening in a beam for a cable tray to pass through it, we would use a contour cut for that. And we would need to put that in the web of the beam to actually pick on the web of the beam to draw your sketch. I've found that you can only do that in level of detail medium. And when you're applying things like the skewed cope, make sure you select the correct flange of the beam. If you need it on the top left hand flange of the beam, make sure that's where you click. The same with your shortening. If you're doing a shorten, make sure you apply it to the correct end of the beam, the left or the right hand end of the beam. A minus value within the shorten command will actually lengthen the beam for you. For your parametric notch, select both items at once. A bit like when we're putting a fin plate connection, you need to do the both elements. And when you're doing the welds, make sure you select all the items that you're welding together using the control and the click. So if you're welding three items together at once, make sure you select all items. And again, once you've placed the weld, you can then modify the weld type. So if it's a fillet weld or a butt weld, the size of the weld, whether you've got 100 millimeters of hit and 200 millimeters of miss, all that can be controlled in the properties. With your welds, you won't actually see anything in the model. It is the same crosshair for every type of weld. It's just when we get to the uh, tagging, obviously different welds, the tag will update. And then when we put that into advanced steel, those weld symbols will actually show on the fabrication drawings and the GA drawings in advanced steel automatically. So we're going to start by modeling a plate because um, we get asked quite a lot, how can I model a flange plate on a beam? So we come in here, we select the plate command, and then we want to pick our plane that we want to be working on. So we can pick a plane and we'll choose the bottom flange of the plate. And then it is as simple as just sketching it out. So we want to do a rectangular, rectangular plate. We don't want it touching the toes so that the workshop can actually get a weld around it. So this is going to be uh, like a brickwork support. So we draw our shape and the system then automatically creates a plate for you. And that is a steel plate. So one of the things at the moment Revit does with plates is the structural material defaults to metal deck. Hopefully Autodesk are going to rectify this in the next couple of releases. You want to change your material before we start copying it around and doing other things with it. We should probably look at doing that on our connections as well. We can specify the coating. So this is one of the extra instance parameters that are added with these elements. And then the justification, 
The reference plane that we click on is where the plate is created. The justification of one or zero means that the plate will move above that point or below that point. Or if you type 0 0.5, it will go half on and half off that point. So that's modeling plates. Let's say we want to put some slotted holes in the web of this beam. Uh, you need to select the plane. So this is where I'm going to go to level of detail medium. You can see the plates and the bolts have turned off. And then I'm just going to sketch my the extents of my pattern. So I'm going to go from the end point of the beam in there. Now this is obviously I'm limited to an hour today. So I will probably do a little bit more construction, a bit more setting out. But to begin with, I'm going to say put my holes in that pattern. And that will put the holes in the top corner of the beam. And you can see in the properties now, I've got side one and side two where I can change my edge distances. This is where move your cursor into the into the actual work area. And as I spin around where there's no connection, we'll see that we've got a couple of holes in there and at the other end. So this is where I'm going to change my offsets and my centers because I've got them the wrong way around. You can see I'm making the changes, but nothing's updating. I can make lots of changes within the properties, but if I want it to update, you've got to bring your cursor into the work area or the display, and then it will update. So to select the holes, you just tab through like you would do normally. And we've got different hole types. So we've got countersunk, blind holes, threaded holes, which are sort of tapped holes. And you can see in here, that I've updated this and I've now got a slotted hole in. We can control the diameter and the length, and then we'll just increase the spacings in there. So that's me putting a pattern of holes in. The next thing I'm gonna do is put some anchors in. So you click the drop down and you choose whether you're doing anchors, bolts, holes, or shear studs. So we'll do anchors. And it follows the same, the same format. We choose the plane that we're going to be working in. We start our sketch. So again, just for speed, I'm just going to the end points of the beam. And then I'm going to work back with the edge distances from there. We could obviously spend a little bit more time and actually set uh, where exactly we want the bolts. And then what that's going to do, I think I must have just missed the plane. That is going to put the anchors in. Now, because I've clicked on the rear face of the column, it's got the anchors coming towards me. So we can modify that in the properties. We're going to put our edge distances in. In the X and the Y, you can see here, I've even forgot that I've got to go into the come out of the properties tab for the changes to take effect. And then I'm going to change these to a Hilti anchor. Remember all of these anchors and bolts and welds and everything have come from advanced steel. If we want to flip the anchors the other way, we choose the inverted option. That will flip the anchors the opposite way around. And then we've got a pattern of 10 in one direction. So that column is going to be anchored into the wall. And then if we spent more time in this model, we would probably put some uh, shim plates in and things like that. Now, I've modeled that plate in there, but I haven't welded it to the beam. So I select both items and then we click where we want the weld and you can see the little crosshair in, the, in there. And these are all our different weld types. So I can make that an eight millimeter fillet weld. And then because that is going to be stitch welded to the beam, I can say, right, well, it's a hundred millimeters of weld and then it's a 200 gap. Now, if you're creating this, 
you might not need to go to this level of detail where you're putting the weld information in, but at least use the plate tools to put the plate in because that will be passed on to the draftsman and there are tools in advanced deal where we can check to make sure that things are welded properly. So for our cut tab, we do have our corner cut options that will put little corner cuts on there. So we could, e we could have sketched that out as part of the shape. We can apply that corner cut and that will update it automatically. Like we said, we might wanna put some uh, shapes into the web of the beam. We might wanna shorten or put a notch skewed on there. We're gonna look at the contour cut. So that will work on beams and plates. But again, I want to put it in the web. So I'm gonna to go to detail level medium. And then it will allow me to sketch any shape I want. So any structural engineers who are watching, uh, don't spit your tea or coffee out. This is just an example because we're taking away a lot of the beam. But if we, once we've put that in there, so these are obviously just the standard uh, draw tools that you Revit, you guys who use Revit day in, day out are used to. And that will put that contour into the web of our beam. Now, in 2019 and 2020, if you'd have made a mistake there, you, you would have had to start again. 2021, we can now edit the boundary of these options. So they have increased the functionality in there for Revit 2021. If we are creating like a welded frame or we've got some items welded together, we can then start to use the mitre connection or the saw cut flange. Now these are parametric connections. So at, if your beam size changes, these connections will update automatically. And the cut through, if you had one beam passing straight the way through another beam, the, if, if either of the options changed size, these would update automatically. So I'm gonna use the notch command, choose the main beam, choose the second beam. And I've even messed it up on here. We need to choose both beams first and then use the notch command. And again, you can see we've got option number one and option number two. So beam number two is notched into the main beam. And if we look at the parameters in here, we can control the distances. We can even put a little chamfer in there on the corners. And if either of those sections change size, that notch would update automatically for me. So you can see in there, that's fully notched with a one millimeter gap all around and it's welded up. And I think, cause I've got my selection input wrong to begin with, it's tried to put that connection on, but it doesn't like it. So we just get rid of that. So that is uh, modeling elements manually. The one thing I didn't talk about when you apply the steel fabrication shape, it does turn your beam cutbacks on, so off, sorry. It disables the beam cutbacks. So you notice when I put that contour cut in at the end there, the beams went straight to the center, the node point of the column. So as soon as you apply these, like we said, groups, assemblies, cutbacks, those don't work anymore. And if you want to get it back, you would have to remodel the the framing or the column. And we've got two more bits to do, custom connection and custom data. So custom connections, if one of the 150 standard connections won't do what you want it to do, you could create a custom connection. One thing with custom connections is you don't have to model everything from scratch. Your custom connection can include one of the standard connections with extra bits added to it. Create everything that you want the custom connection, that should say to model or to do. And then what you do is you place a generic connection into the model. Remember, if you your custom connection is working for three members, make sure you select your three members before you put the generic connection in. And then you choose the select generic, connect, generic connection and then click the customize option, name your connection, and then you'll be able to add the elements that you require. So one of the ones we get asked about is, can we do an embedded end plate into the 
concrete, one that would have rebar on it. Yes, we can do, but I can't model it with a rebar element, but I can do it with a round bar element. So I want an end plate on here. So I'm going to start with the end plate connection. So that will put our end plate on. I'm just going to go in and edit the parameters. Increase the length of the beam. So I'm going to make it 100 millimeters longer. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to go from the extent of the beam, make it 30 or 50 millimeters bigger all round. Now, if you're casting this in place with um, shear studs, you can do that within this end plate joint. If you want like round bar sections, you can't do that within the joint. So this is where I'm going to come to my top of steel level. And I am simply just going to model in some round bars. So round bars are available as a structural family. So in this particular template, I have them all loaded in just for doing demonstration. So I'm going to model some 12 mil round bars. This is my sort of work around. I can't do it with rebar, but if you were doing this and this was a sort of standard connection for you, I suppose we could create, we could copy the round bar family and create a new one called, um, 12 millimeter rebar instead as long as it's a structural framing or structural column and then I'm just going to use the offset from levels in here to drop it down 50 mil because we want four in here So I'm going to copy one on top of each other. It is giving me the warning that I've got identical instances in the same place, but I'm just going to change the offsets of this to like minus 200. So you can see now we've got the two in inverted commas bits of rebar because these tools will only work with structural framing and structural columns. So just mirror those. So I want to roll all of this into one connection. The only thing I'm going to put in there as well is I'm going to put a weld in so that those bits of round bar are welded to the plate. So not really fussed where that weld position goes but those to the system are now welded together. So now what I need to do is take all of those elements and roll them into a custom connection. So what we do is we apply our generic connection. You can see the generic connection in there. That just puts that green symbol in. And then we can customize that generic connection. So give that connection a name. And these custom connections can be transferred with the transfer project standards as well. And then we click the add button and we choose everything. So add the four round bars, add the weld and add the end plate connections. And you see all of that now has been in, again, in inverted commas grouped together. That is an, uh, a steel connection, but that connection is now available in my connection dropdown. And we can apply that automatically to any other structural framing in this project. If you want to edit it, we can add things, remove things, and that will update those instances within the model if we did add or update anything. The last little bit is custom data. Now this usually pops up on the Revit structure forum every few months. Someone will say, I need an extra bolt. I need a different bolt. I need a different anchor. I need a different coating. How do I add those? Now, what you have to remember is all of these elements have been taken from advanced steel. So they are not standard Revit families as you guys are used to. It's not like a bit of structural framing or a structural beam. These are advanced steel elements that
that have been put into Revit. So they are controlled via databases and they are direct copies of the advanced deal databases. So if you are working with an advanced deal user who has this custom data and you need it or you would like it, if you ask them nicely, they could send you the database and you could just paste their database in. They are located in your C program data Autodesk. There is a folder for Revit Steel Connections and then the version you're running and then the build you're running. Before you modify any of these databases, just take a backup of them because if you mess the database up, we will have to do a repair and reinstall on your Revit. So before you start messing about with anything, just take a copy of the ones you're going to mess with. Those databases can be opened with Microsoft SQL and lines can be added to the correct table. So if you're adding coatings, that's fairly easy to do with a table editor. Items such as bolts, anchors, shear studs and coatings, it would be very, very difficult for you guys to add those extra items via the databases because for a bolt or anchor, you need to cross relate about six different tables. Um, and if you don't know what you're doing, that can be tricky. Uh, we do it for customers regularly, but even we don't do it via the databases. For bolts and anchors and shear stud, Advanced Deal has its own table editor where you can add these extra items. So that's the bolt editor. We can add all these different bolts in and duplicate them and set up the rules. It's a lot easier through these editors. So if you have an AEC collection, Advanced Deal is part of your AEC collection. Once you've set up these extra items inside Revit, for example, you can just, sorry, once you've set up the new items in Advanced Steel, you can then just copy them straight into the Revit folder. You can take the Advanced Steel database and paste it in. Autodesk, if you are interested in creating new bolts and anchors and things like that, Autodesk has an excellent hour long video, which is available on YouTube for creating extra bolts and things like that. Or come speak to us at Grey Tech, we can add them in for you. So once you've done them in advanced deal, the items can be copied back into the Revit folder. That is the way they work at the moment because it is the advanced deal data that has been put inside of Revit. So there is no family for these anchors and bolts and shear studs. And that takes us to the end of today's webinar and we're nearly bang on time. So if anyone does have any questions about anything, uh, now is the time to add them into the questions dialogue. Um, so I've got one in here. Uh, the detail of steel structures in Revit tags and annotations in general is not the same as advanced steel. Uh, so is there a way to automate tables in advanced steel? So is that, uh, did you just, expand further on what you want to do Massimo there do you want to do the dimensioning and labeling in advanced steel uh, what exactly do you want to do oh I see what you're saying is there a way to add tables like you can do in the advanced steel like fabrication drawings and things like that not inside Revit. Um, Autodesk are not. Um, Autodesk have both of these tools in the collection. So the way it is sort of positioned is Revit is the designing tool for the general structure. And as you, you guys might want to put on some basic connections, Advanced Steel is the steel detailing tool. So if you want to do fabrication drawings, for example, you want to go into advanced steel because advanced steel will automate automatically your fabrication drawings. And I can just see if I can get an example up on the screen. But the, the code for running the automatic fabrication drawings in advanced steel is enormous. There are no plans as far as I'm aware for Autodesk to put that functionality inside of Revit because you're, you basically have to create a whole new program and that's why we have uh, advanced steel. So if we look at what, uh, an example of an advanced steel fabrication drawing for those of you who haven't seen one. So 
that there is an example of an advanced steel fabrication drawing. So those are the connections added either in advanced steel or Revit. It will automatically put on all these locating dims, all the weld symbols. It will break each assembly down into all the piece part components. You will get a drawing for the piece cut part components. I'm assuming I'm guessing that's the sort of table you were asking for. So it says to make rafter one, there are two in total. For one assembly, you need all of these components. So no, at the moment, there is no way of doing that inside of Revit. That's why we have uh, advanced steel. Uh, if anyone has any questions like i said type them in now um, nothing else has popped up my contact information is there i am on linkedin and twitter as well uh, so you can reach out to me that way if you are interested in learning more about these tools obviously i've only got 45 50 minutes to show you these tools we i have written a one day training course so if you are a revit user and you want to learn more about these tools we can do um, an online full day of training for these tools or if you want to look at advanced steel in more detail just reach out and we can set up uh, a demonstration of advanced steel so nothing else has popped up so thank you very much for joining today's webinar and i hope you found it useful